Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Xinhua Live. This is Mike, and today we are going to show you some more of China's cutting-edge homegrown technology. Right now, I am standing outside one space, as you can see, which is China's first privately owned launch vehicle company for rockets. So we're going to take a look inside and see some of the rocket technology that China's first private company has been developing. There you have it, folks. See the big one space sign. And to this side, we can see the mini rocket that this company has been developing. Now this is uh, a mini rocket that's eight meters long with a six meter solid propellant rocket engine that can give a thrust of 35 tons. And in this space, you can see that it's you know, not as big as the uh, state-owned rocket companies, but it will give way to many cutting-edge experiments. And our cameraman is giving us some close-up shots of this uh, rocket model. And to know more about this technology and to know more about this rocket company, we invite Mr. Shu Chang, who is the CEO and founder of this company. Mr. Shu Chang, thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome to One Space. Thank you very much. So, so can you tell us a little bit about this uh, project that you're having right here, this um, uh, rocket? Okay, look at this giant guy. And this is our um, solid proponent motor for the rocket. It's like a, the engine for, for a car. So um, it, it's, six, it's about six meters long and uh, it will be used for our X-series rockets and M-series rockets. I see and I hear that uh, the rocket launch is scheduled to take place sometime in early 2018. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, prior to say, we are, um, we are planning to send these rockets into sky in June this year. Uh, now let's go take a look at some of the features on this side. Over here, we see the wall being plastered. Is this your motto here? What does this say? Can you tell our audiences what this motto says? Yeah, to be the um, best uh, space technology company in the world. Oh, I see. And, and what inspired you to you know, launch this company in the first place? Um, actually, I, uh, started, my major was uh, space aircraft designing. Uh, back in university, so I, uh, when I heard that uh, some private companies like SpaceX launched their uh, rockets into the sky, I, I was amazed and uh, uh, gathered some excellent people together and I asked them, if Americans can do this, why cannot we Chinese? Um, so, we are, uh, so we decided to set up one space. Wow, so that's a very big ambition with just a hint of patriotism. And we see some of the, uh, I guess, investors here, the shareholders, right? How did you go about finding these shareholders? Yeah, it's hard for us to find shareholders back in mm -hmm. 2015, but now um, because of the policy, op the opening policy in this area, more and more um, VCs are getting into the, this area. Uh, as you can see now here, uh, we have some investors from uh, universities like uh, Harbin Institute of Technology and also we have some uh, investments from uh, local governments like uh, Chongqing government and we also have some other VCs like Star VC and uh, Zhengxuan Investment. Oh, I see. So a combination of state and private investors yes, right. is what made this company what it is today. Uh, over on this side, we have a big screen and we are going to play for our audiences an experimental video. Okay. okay. Um, uh, we can show you some on-site video. Uh, actually, we made a test, a rocket a motor test in back in last year. And we can see these pictures. Uh, actually, we overcome a lot of difficulties uh, to do this 
uh, to make this test successful. And um, you can see this. Now, uh, some of our audiences are really curious to know because we, we do have a very well-developed state-owned rocket industry. So as a private company, what kind of gaps can you fill and how do you complement each other, the state-owned and the private-owned? How do they fill each other's technical and market gaps? Okay, that's a good question. Um, uh, state-owned companies are dedicated to f uh, fulfill some uh, national commissions, but com commercial companies like OneSpace are dedicated to um, provide some service and products to the commercial markets. So that's different. And uh, you know, as a professional, I'm sure that you've heard of the recent uh, news about SpaceX, right? So then, how does this you know private Chinese company uh, size up to its foreign competitors? What is our rank, and what are some of our advantages? Okay, um, and talking about SpaceX, uh, it's really wonderful that uh, they sent their Franco Heavy into orbit uh, yesterday. Um, um, for business uh, of, ones of SpaceX, their, their rockets are used to send big satellites, big communication satellites, big GPS satellites into the orbit. But for one space, we are dedicated to send micro satellites below 500 kilograms. So um, uh, we are different. Um, and second, uh, we can provide more cost-efficient uh, uh, launching service uh, for, for those uh, satellite companies. Oh, I see, I see. And, you know, for the end users here on Earth, what are some of the uh, conveniences that will be brought to them with the launch of, you know, satellites by your company? Okay, that's, uh, um, a lot of people on the Earth are not, still are not connected to the Internet. Mm -hmm. For people, uh, travel, traveling on the seas, for people traveling in the air, and for people living in remote areas. Right. They are not, actually, they are not connected to the internet. But with the uh, technology of space, te of space uh, products like satellites, they can be connected to the internet. Mm -hmm. so, um, but um, the satellites need, to, uh, need our rockets to be sent into the orbit. So that's how uh, space technology can improve people's lives. Right, you know, every time I'm on an airplane, I just wish that uh, Wi-Fi can just work, and hopefully, you know, your company will uh, make that happen in the future, and it will make the world smaller one step at a time. All right, yep. thank you so much, uh, Mr. Shu Chang. And right now, we are going to go inside the lab to interview some of the engineers of the company who will give more details uh, on the technical aspects of the rockets. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're joining us just now, we have just entered the rocket research lab of OneSpace, China's first privately owned launch vehicle company. And to my left and right, you can see our engineers hard at work with some top secret uh, projects. But we did manage to find one engineer who was willing to share with us some of the uh, secrets of the projects that he's working on. Hi there. Hi. What's your name? Yeah, my name is Zhou Zhizhe. And awesome. If you don't mind, I will pull up a chair and take a look at yes, what you're working sit on. down. Oh, I see. You got all these cool gadgets. You know, now what, what is this? What is this? Oh, this here? is the integrated controller. I and see. Yes, this is the brain of our rocket. Mm, okay. Well, it's like, you know, it's pretty small, right? It's like a brain, but it's packed into this uh, condensed area. How much does it weigh? Yeah, it's only 1.8 kilograms. Oh, I see. I see. Does it usually you know, way more? Yes, actually, previously, um, the equipments used on the rocket mm -hmm. will be like separate, different equipment. Uh, for example, like, like that, that, or that. But all of the functions can now be integrated into this one small box. Oh, I see, I see. Uh, what yeah. kind of features does this box have? Yes, so I'd like to say that it, it has four different modules, like fly control module, mm -hmm. and GPS receiver module, power distribution module, mm -hmm. and timing output module. Oh, wow. It's pretty amazing that all these uh, very important features can be packed into something so you know, compact, right? That's, it's quite a, quite a progressive development. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to say about this, uh, this gadget here? 
Oh yes, based on its function, I think it is useful or it is very suitable for the aerospace usage. So a lot of you know multifaceted uses for this uh, this so-called brain of the rocket. Well, that's really cool. Uh, now, Mr. Joe, is there any other technology that you would want to share with us here uh, at your company? Yes. As how a about we? Expert? <laughs> yes. How about we go and have a look at the jet vane? Oh, sure. That sounds cool. Well, what, what is it called again? A jet. A jet vane. A vane. Like yeah, vane. Vanes? Or uh, yes, something like that. Oh, I see. Okay, so we're going back out here into the big lobby, and we're going to uh, look at the jet vanes. Yes, jet vane is something that we can control the um, rocket's attitude. Oh, the altitude control. Yeah, altitude oh, that's control. Important. Okay, so if you look at that. Oh, this is what we're looking at? Yeah, Interesting. this is the jet vane. This one or this one? This, this one. one. Can I touch it? Yes, sure. of course. Let me try it. Try. Oh my God, this is so heavy! Wow, why why is this heavy? What what is it made of? It's made of tungsten and copper. Oh, okay. And and what is the usage of this uh, particular gadget? Yeah, so this gadget will be installed on this thing. Like this thing is the last part of our rocket, and the flame will come out like from here, like out from that engine, and the vane will be here and the different position will provi provide like different uh, uh, different position of the current oh i see so, so it in would which go case like yes back and forth so it, if it goes this way then it, it's kind of like a steering oar sort yeah. of for the rocket yeah yeah <laughs> it's my non expert uh, uh yes your understanding is pretty quite right <laughs> oh thank you hey, it's, it's all rocket science to me um all right, well, thank you so much, and we're going to go and explore some of the uh, other rooms, if you don't mind. No right, problem. Thank you so much, Mr. Joe. Yeah, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, so the word vein that we were just discussing uh, out there, it actually is V-A-N-E and not the blood vein that I had previously assumed. But it's okay, now we are at uh, another section of the company. This is an office, I believe, and we're going to take a look at what the workers here are working on. Hi there. How hi. are you? What's uh, your name? I'm, I'm Georgina. Oh, okay. hi. Nice to meet you, Georgina. Yeah. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll pull up a chair okay, so again. Please. And can you show me some of the stuff that you're working on? Yeah, we have just completed our two important uh, experiments, and one is our OSM uh, rocket's uh, wind tunnel. Uh, experiment and another one is our RCS experiment. Okay. Let me show you the first one. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, the first one is our wind tunnel experiment. You can see from this video that the model was measured as a stage angle. Mm -hmm. uh, wait a second. Yeah, as a stage angle of attack. And you can see shock wave, a uh, shock wave from the perspective of head and corn are. Uh, clear and stable. So, can you tell our audiences just what is a wind tunnel? Yeah, wind tunnel is just uh, equipment. It's like a experiment equipment is uh, used for simulating our real rockets uh, launch uh, launch what well, launch situation. Yes. Okay, so what what does it simulate exactly? Uh, the wind. Uh, no, it's not the wind. It's just um, the data we gather from this experiment. That's a Wind from the inlet to the outlet and the data. Oh, uh, I yes. see, I see. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And uh, what was the other experiment that you wanted yeah. to show us? The other experiment is our revision control system. And, and what is that exactly? It is used for control the orbit and uh, attitude. Okay, so yeah. controlling the orbit and the altitude. Yeah. I see. Uh, it can adjust the rocket's speed and orbit and attitude. Look okay. at this. Look at this system. Yeah, let, let's take a look at this, yeah. uh, this video. Right here. It consists of this part. Ah. It is like this. Uh, 
a single propellant tank. Mm -hmm. This is engine and of course the uh, tubes and all kinds of wheel valves. I, I mean, see. Yeah. And, and we can see that if we can play the video again, the, uh, the sparks coming out, the flames coming out. Yeah, the flames coming out from the engine. It looks pretty powerful. Yeah. So would this be the flame that's propelling the rocket into space? Uh, no, it's just adjust the, the angle of the rocket. Oh, okay, in, so in it can space. adjust yeah. the angle yes. that the rocket is traveling mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, that's yeah. pretty cool. Is there anything else that you want to show our audiences? Uh, no, it's just it's our little secret. <laughs> okay, yes. all right. Thank you very much. I'll yeah, you, thank uh, you. Yeah. Go back to work mm -hmm. now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. This is the office, another one secret area of this uh, one space company. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope that you have enjoyed exploring one space with Xinhua Live. And here at Xinhua, we are sure to keep following the story. And the next time we see you, we will be having this model up in the air in the stars. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our videos on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, and we will see you all next time.